Ladies and gents, welcome back. We've seen some, well, ridiculous things in recent times. And like I've always said, when something is ridiculous, it's deserving of ridicule. And ridicule, we must. And, well, I've brought on an engineer and owner of Serbu Firearms, Mark Serbu, to talk about how just absolutely ridiculous things are getting here in Canada. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks. Good to be here. So why am I talking to you today? <laughs> something something came <laughs> up in a bill in Canada, um, a firearm that you made ages ago, and um, it's it's now on the list to be banned. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, it was a, a silly gun that I made as a joke to make fun of a, a, a guy who's also in the gun business. And he everything he made was called the something master. So I made the butt master just to make fun of him. And uh, in fact, if you looked, if you see it in the, like when I rotate the gun around in some of the videos, you can see that the serial number is DHM, which are his initials. And it said OU812, just play on that old Van Halen album. But, oh, okay. I see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Now, so, yeah, here's, so the the gun it was it was just a joke that you made and yeah. and from and what I understand off. from what I understand it was what twenty three years ago to boot like this isn't yeah. something that's recent yeah almost twenty four years ago yeah yeah and it just um the the weird thing to me at first when I made my video initially I'm like the the strange thing was why does Canada even know about this. So I have, you know, I instantly jumped to conspiracy theory because you know, I'm in the gun business and I'm like, yeah, this is an NFA firearm. You know, we don't have to register regular guns like we make. My company makes lots and lots of guns and we don't register any of them. But if it's an NFA firearm, National Firearms Act, 1934, machine guns, silencers, sawed off shotgun, all that kind of stuff. It has to be registered per the NFA. So mm -hmm. this was an AOW, any other weapon, because it's a gadget gun. It's unusual. It has a strange firing mm -hmm. mechanism doesn't look like a gun. Right. So that's registered. And normally NFA stuff is privileged tax information and nobody's supposed to know about it. But since I put my videos out, there have been a bunch of comments out there and somebody's even saying that, oh, there's an Interpol. Interpol has some kind of database with a hundred and something thousand guns. And, and this is, oh, this is Interpol number of blah, blah, blah. So somebody apparently. Oh, so there, there was a yeah. way that the Canadian government learned yeah, about it. So for yeah, all those people that are that are confused with what's going on here, this is this is concerning uh, Bill C twenty one, which is a bill that was initially designed to ban handguns in Canada, and then they went on to make um, a bunch of firearms illegal by name and make new categories. This is a three hundred and seven page document, and on page two you can find at the bottom Serbu Buttmaster. This is the gun that you you made one of. Uh, 23 years ago, and it's listed in a, in a piece of Canadian, uh, in the Canadian legislature now, and they're trying to ban it by name. By the way, I mean, the guns that are on here, a lot of them are just ridiculous. The Benelli Comfort, like uh, a gun named the Comfort is a, a duck gun, essentially. It's Comfort because it's it's got re recoil mitigation to, to make things a little bit more comfortable when you're getting foul essentially but how did you learn about this where where did you because it's obscure a canadian piece of legislation and yeah. your gun being mentioned on it yeah i got lucky some guy emailed me from canada and he goes he goes mark server you're a god this is this is you know top level trolling look you've got this butt master it made the it made a canadian ban list. i'm like oh what and i I researched it, a, researched it a little bit i was like yeah man this is crazy and i i was all excited at first you know this it's kind of funny. He, do you guys, I'm sure you've seen the movie or you've heard of the movie, The Jerk, Steve Martin, The Jerk. It was from the 80s, yeah. maybe not. Anyway, it's this idiot guy. He he was raised as a young black child. He was raised in a black family and he's this white nerd. But anyway, he moves out and and he gets in the phone book finally. And he gets the phone book and he opens up and he sees his name there. He goes, look, I am somebody. And... <laughs> It led to a bunch of funny stuff, like some guy trying to kill him with a Mac 10, but absurd movie. But 
but I kind of had that feeling like, you know, there've been a bunch of gun bands here in the U S over the years. Mm -hmm. And my name is never in there. They never have my guns or my company. I'm like, man, I feel left out. And all of a sudden it's like, yes, I am somebody. Canada wants to ban me. Canada, but Canada (laughs) wants to ban you with one of the most obscure things. It's funny that it was even on the list because just based, based on the dimensions of the firearm, itself it, the barrel's short enough that it would have fallen under other categories that already make it illegal in this country anyway and that 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 was something i i only learned from watching runkle of the bailey uh, a youtuber who's also a firearms expert lawyer and and that's this is what he does and he, he consults people on firearms laws in canada but um <laughs> Have you been contacted by any of the Canadian media? I noticed that you were on you were on uh, Tucker Carlson uh, earlier this week, which is amazing. Congratulations for making Tucker Tucker Carlson. But have uh, have any of the Canadian media outlets, other than Independence, tried to contact you about this? No, just just you and uh, and Ian and uh, and it's funny. I, I I'm gathering from from as you say how how the Canadian media is these days. They they probably don't want to hear my side of the story because <laughs> they they don't they they probably want to downplay this. They want to keep this under the rug because this is not good. Because the only thing it, it can do, and like I said on, on Tucker, it's like it's, you're obviously inept if you put this gun on there. It's it's a one off and never left my possession. Why on earth would it need to be on your ban list? It, it, especially considering it's already banned just by virtue of its barrel length. So it just it just just stinks of ineptitude. Well, all it really does is it it kind of shows that they're they're blanket banning guns. They're not even like looking into what the gun is, the design, the features, uh, the dimensions of it, or or if it falls under other categories. They're naming them by name I, haphazardly from seemingly from just other lists that have nothing to do with uh, the reason why they're trying to or purportedly yeah. trying to ban firearms in Canada. Yeah, especially tr- when Trudeau himself was out there saying. No, we're only going after these weapons of mass death and destruction. We're not going after your hunting rifles. We're not going after your hunting shotguns. And then, you know, you look at it and it is haphazard and it's 300 and something pages long. So, yeah, it's, there's just about every gun ever made is on that list. It's it's crazy. Well, there's no mass destruction with a 22 long rifle that you have to unscrew yeah. to make another shot. That's the thing that gets me the most. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was, that- but you did you did do something on Tucker that that really uh, it made me laugh the most. You 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 said you said uh, prison pocket, <laughs> prison wallet, prison wallet. Uh, my favorite line, like yeah, from Trudeau saying all this stuff like weapons of mass death and destruction. I'm like, what are you gonna do? Come into a room, whip this out of your prison wallet, and fire away with one shot, and then everybody beats you to death. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's absurd. absurd. It's absurd, and and also in the bill is the fact that they're going to be banning airsoft uh, toys, toy guns in Canada under the same legislation, or anything that it, that looks like a real gun, anything that looks like something that's actually been manufactured, which is all of them, all of the the airsoft larpers, and of 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 of, of, of which I am one of. I I enjoy shooting those things, um, yeah. but. Uh, if it looks like something that's a real manufactured firearm, uh, it will be banned under this legislation as well. So, so much for going out and getting your exercise, kids. That's yeah. I mean, it's it's really dumb because are you who are you helping by banning airsoft? Who's going to get if somebody whips out an airsoft and goes in somewhere and and, and pretends they're going to hold up people? Who's going to get hurt? The guy with the airsoft is going to get shot to death by the cops. No one else is going to get hurt. Why do they care about that? Yeah. You should welcome. Well, and and there there is issues with airsoft because some of the guns they they look so real that uh, they actually like some people are pretty you know willy nilly about taking them from their car to the to the place where you go and shoot them, and uh, yeah, the cops have been called and there's been emergencies and stuff that have happened because of it. But that being said, it's 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 the the firearm the owners of these they're not even firearms or toys <laughs> should be more careful and that's really all it comes down to there's no yeah. no no real serious serious threat of danger but so for people to understand where you come from you're you have an engineering background and you're you you have a, a company that manufactures firearms uh can you tell us a bit about about that yeah i um I got my degree from the University of South Florida back in 1990, 
and I worked in flight simulation for eight years and I uh, got bored with a day job, but I, I had taken a machine shop class in college and I'd been exposed to machining and I was really into that shiny metal. So I bought my own machines, had a couple of machines in my garage and I started making my own guns. And um, eventually I ran out of shop and just started doing stuff on the side. And, and by 1999, I, I started the company in 96, but by 1999 I, I quit my full-time job, which, which is really scary when you're, when you're young, when you're in your early 30s, like the thought of not having a, a regular paycheck, luckily, I, well, luckily and unluckily, I had a wife at the time <laughs> and she had a job. So it wasn't, it wasn't a, a total, you know, huge risk. But yeah, it's, it's a scary step. Then, you know, I started off making, I actually started making silenced Ruger pistol. I would modify the Ruger Mark II 22 pistol oh, with cool. an integral silence. Then I made my own, uh, I actually went to the Super Shorty that, super popular little sawed off shotgun with a fold down grip that's been everywhere in the movies tv but then i designed my first 50 cal rifle in 1999 and that's when things really started going because that's uh you know it's and that's big, your claim to fame yeah and they're, they're trying to ban them actually rod blagojevich the you know disgraced former governor of illinois which i guess some huge number of the last it's like some statistic, like the last seven governors of Illinois are in prison or have gone to prison. So Rod Blagojevich, he was a senator at the time or a congressman, and he introduced the Military Swipe Sniper Weapons Act in 1999. So because of that, an unknown nobody was able to start putting out 50 cals and, and be on the same footing as the big boys. It was a you know lucky timing. And, uh, you know, it just went from there and it's been March daycare ever since. And I don't know, we, we got kind of serious in the last three or four years and, uh, it's going crazy now. Yeah. I can see that. Cause there, there's a lot of people tuning into your YouTube channel here for, uh, for everyone. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description down below, but you have, uh, you have a new a new micro uh, 50 BMG out. I noticed this only five days ago was posted. Uh uh really really cool looking uh, piece of equipment there yeah it's it's funny because i i remember when i first made my uh my first sub 30 inch barrel 50 bmg I'm, you know as a you know an engineer and kind of a purist for ballistics and stuff i'm like oh that's, that's stupid it's absurd and here i'm making something with a 10 inch barrel <laughs> and it's it's heresy it's it's absurd but if you look at the ballistics of it it's not that bad i mean that thing still that little 10 inch barrel tiny thing has the same muzzle energy as a 338 338 lapua magnum so it's not it's not wow. uh, it's not small it's not a small amount of energy no and if it was uh if you'd registered it sooner it may have made the list on bill c21 as well <laughs> yeah, but, they, yeah look yeah they have my all of my guns are on their list i noticed every gun oh everything you've made okay so it's all on there well, they, we're, we're not going to be getting any of those uh, 50 BMG micros in Canada anytime we, soon. You, we were shipping 50 BMG rifles to Canada. We, we had an importer in Canada for a while, for years. But that, that ended last year sometime, I think. And it really sucked. Yeah, I can imagine. We have some semi-autos. Our semi-auto 50 cals were allowed to go to Canada, and they did. The only thing we had to do was uh, decrease the magazine capacity from 10 down to 5. But right. they're there. They're there. I mean, out of 50 cal turbo firearms. And in so are they, are they, have they just made them illegal here in Canada now since, or? No, I, I don't, I guess you might have to get rid of, I'm not up on the laws, but I think you might have to get rid of them, which, which is really, that's really loud. Well, with this C21, I'm sure the, they won't be in there. I mean, they're getting rid of the Manelli comfort of, of all guns. So this is, this is a thing, but maybe, maybe buy them before, uh, before you can. Uh, before they're not available anymore. Hey, Mark, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and joining me today to talk about obscure Canadian issues. I'm sure you've got all kinds of other things to be doing right now. But <laughs> no problem. Hey, uh, you guys need help. Like we, we, we're in the same boat. You know, we we all have overreaching idiot politicians who want to take our rights away for supposedly to help us. But you know, we know what's really going on. All right. It well, sucks. I'm glad to help. Thank you so much. Thank That's you so much. Lot. And thank you guys for tuning in and sharing these videos and letting people know what's going on. But this thing being so ridiculous, share it out as the as the ridicule that it deserves. Let's let's make this famous. Let's make Trudeau and his government famous for including the butt master by name in a piece of legislation. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. Keep on trucking.